it starts. <laughs> Got the little doo doo doo. Hey, we are on. So, I uh, everybody, welcome to the Ten Foil Bunker. I am Mike, and today I'm uh, with Nick Partillo from uh, God. Uh, do you have anything that you're from, or is it just from high school? We know each other. Or <laughs> do you have anything you want to link? Just or? High school. Yeah, just high school. I didn't know if you had anything you want to promote or if you were doing anything. Nah. Uh, go to you still work at Humana. Go uh, run your insurance through Humana. <laughs> yeah, I'm still okay. Humana. Take it there. So uh, today we're sort of touching on something that he hit me up with. Uh, I put out a Facebook post not too long ago talking about conspiracies, and he hit me with one that really threw me. Uh, I was like, "What in the world is going on?" So uh, country music affected by 9/11. So I'm super excited to get into this. Go ahead. Did you want to start us off or? No, no, you're good. No. So uh, hitting it with a, so apparently as soon as 9-11 happened, the whole like sound and flow of country music did a whole 180. So they went from outlaw, fun, you know, uh, you know well, I guess uh, fun and sad. I don't know. It was always rather they were going fishing or they were sad that they couldn't go fishing or their dog got hit by a train that also killed their grandma. Like there's always something really break. weird in Outlanders. Yeah, like what? What's sort of your your relationship with country music? Uh, I mean, my I didn't. I never really. I grew up on some country music. Um, I mean, my mom listened to like Loretta Lynn and the Judds. And, yeah, uh, Judds were uh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, especially here in Kentucky, they were everywhere because they're mm -hmm. from Kentucky. Uh, that was and, the first you know, thing I noticed fun. when I moved here. <laughs> country yeah. was everywhere. It's not like that in the rest of the country. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, my stepdad, um, Phil, he, when him and my mom met, um, he listened to a lot of country music. So I kind of had to listen to country music whenever mm -hmm. I was really around him, which is fine. But he listened to, like, really old country music. Sort of like that um, then, line that was like between rock and roll and country. Yeah, I mean, he listened to like Johnny Cash, which I, mm -hmm. I grew up listening to Johnny Cash. My dad listened to Johnny Cash when I was growing up. Um, but he listened to like Hank Jr. Um, he listened to a lot of George Strait, which I guess that's late 80s, early 90s, you know, 90s. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, he listened to like a lot of 90s country, which was fine. Mm -hmm. Was uh, what was the vibe back then? Was it still the same thing? Like I, I always feel bad. Like my whole vibe of country has always been it's rather super sad, or they're sad they can't go fishing, or someone died. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like a lot of. Uh, I think a lot of country in like the nineties were like love ballads, um, love songs. You know, George Strait mm -hmm. sang about a lot of you know romance a lot, and. Then, you know, you had Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, you know, he listened to a lot of Garth Brooks, which I like, you know, yeah. um, which that's, you know, we can touch on that a little later just because of the interesting oh, interesting is, is story there... about Garth Brooks earlier this year as okay. far as politics go. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll touch on that when we get to the politics section. I'll have to remember that. You might have to remember that, but if anybody that watches Why So Nerdy knows I'm very... So... <laughs> <laughs> But just just remind me when we get back to that. So so the flow was sort of the same. Like and then when nine eleven hit, it flipped in on a one eighty. So it went more towards patriotic, you know, gun wielding, love my president, all that such fun. And then uh, some of it got really. I mean, I guess country's always been mildly racist. Let's let's be honest here. But you know, it definitely got a little bit more upheaval in recent times after nine eleven. Yeah, uh, I mean. I never really thought until I read this theory, I never really thought about it, but after reading it, I, I, I kind of like was like, yeah, country music after 9-11 was definitely um, propaganda as far as like the war um, and then, you know, the, you know, being pro pro George, you know, pro Bush and pro war and him oh, yeah. in the shows over there. I mean, it was definitely used as propaganda. And it like who it was talks the guy that it. wrote the uh the song that was specifically like talking about putting a boot in someone's ass and like, you know. Yeah, uh Toby Keith. That's yeah, it talks yeah. about it in the guy who made pretty much buku money off of said 9-11, which is one yeah. of the things that sort of I mean, kicked in my head when we when you brought this up. I was like, Are you saying Toby Keith caused 9-11? That would be interesting. <laughs> but, no, no, not at all. But I, I was yeah, super I mean, into that one when I heard. 
or uh, Alan Jackson wrote, they mentioned the Alan Jackson song, um, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning? I mean, that mm-hmm. was definitely a song about 9-11. And, and I, I'm all for doing stuff, you know, remembering tragic times, you know, mm-hmm. like 9-11 that's happened in this country. But you can tell, like, those songs were used definitely as propaganda. And, oh, yeah. It was at every... Every political event, every big event. I mean, even stadiums were filled with it. Definitely at rodeos. I remember, yeah. uh, in, in fact, uh, Borat did a thing on that where they were playing all the songs about 9-11 at uh, the rodeo he went to when he sang the, yeah. uh, oh, what play, what country was he supposed to be from? Uh, oh, Uzbekistan, uh, right? Uzbekistan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And he, he pissed off. That was apparently an actual country. Uh, we're American. We don't know. But <laughs> but uh, apparently it was an actual country super pissed off a bunch of people, but it was such a great movie. Really, really yeah. opened up my eyes to how much stuff was going on around here, especially uh, weirdly enough on this topic and country music, you know, life and country music, you know, uh, what would that be? Uh, the whole genre in itself. Yeah. So when, yeah. when did you come across this? I, I was... I was looking up. Um, I was read. I, I'm pretty sure I came across it on Facebook. Yeah. Um, but I look at conspiracy theories and and stuff like that all the time. And I know I'm probably on a watch list somewhere. <laughs> just some of the stuff I read on the internet, like I seems know, to be a thing with most of the guests we have on the show. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm on a watch list somewhere. Eh, it's okay. Like I'm not doing but anything illegal. If but they want I'll your like, weird your weird internet searches, they can have them right. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I look up so much conspiracy, true crime stuff. Like it's, I've always been interested in that kind of stuff, but I think this particular thing I came across on Facebook. Yeah. It seems to be I think most someone good, had shared it. Or, someone had shared it or someone had copied it and put it in as a link or something. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure it was Facebook though. That's yeah. It, and I mean, you know, honestly, like, like when I when I read it, it's definitely a it, it's definitely a catch. Like it's a long read. I'll I'll leave a link. Uh, I, I won't have it on the Facebook right now for everybody watching live, but I'll definitely have it for uh, the podcast when it comes out because it's a really good read. Like my god, like it sort of opens up your eyes to like what was it? <laughs> Whoever wrote it also has to be you know at least a decent comedian or something. I'll read that that quote later that we we talked about earlier, yeah. but yeah, but definitely some good jabs in here and some good I mean good content. Uh, but specifically uh, they were talking about the Dixie chicks and everything, Yeah, which Dixie I mean, I've, has always been sort of a controversial theme, I guess, especially around that time. Cause then what was it? Outlaw country, right? Mm-hmm. So that, they were part of that outlaw country doing things, you know, you're not supposed to do, but they, they talked about the president, uh, president Bush at the time, the president Bush, I, I mean, he thought he wanted the, the in front of his name, I'm sure, <laughs> especially at the time. But uh, apparently talking bad about him and country music came taboo right around that time. Yeah, I mean, I think I think them I mean, I think them speaking out against Bush and against the war. I mean, I think the country music. Uh, you know. Like I don't want to say country art. I don't want to say country artists. I'm going to say a lot of country music listeners, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they touch that on it in here. They're talking about sort of like the middle class, like, you know, like hardworking, you know, but not yeah. so hardworking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they pretty much got blacklisted from, yeah. you I know, mean, and I mean, now, oh, I mean, I see some of their stuff on, like, I see like, I see some of their stuff on the internet sometimes. Like, I don't know if they, you know, kind of made a comeback, but I mean, yeah, for a long time there, they pretty much got their asses kicked out of the country music you know yeah they were like booed off stage like all kinds of crazy stuff i looked into it a little bit about how bad it got like i i don't even i I didn't run into a time that they come back are they up now are they doing new things or i'm pretty sure they're still together but i mean i i i run across like music videos of theirs and stuff on facebook sometimes maybe they switch genres (laughs) they're not like a group i particularly follow well they're they're not even the dixie chicks now they changed their name to the chicks so now they're just the chicks they got rid of dixie that's good i mean in in fairness i mean that's probably after that whole debacle it's probably a good thing on their end well now uh dolly parton she changed because she has the dixie state you know there's dolly world 
down in uh, Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg, mm -hmm. and she had, a, she had a place called the Dixie Stampede, which pretty popular. It's like a you get dinner on a show pretty much. Yeah. Um, and now it's just a stampede, you know, and, uh, you know, Dolly Parton is one of those more progressive country music artists, kind of, you know, her and Willie Nelson and, you know, all the all the country music artists way back when I feel like they're more progressive now than some of the newer generations of country music. Oh, or, absolutely. You know, Things have definitely you know. tightened up. And, and, and like in this theory, it, it definitely stated like, you know, after 9-11, it became a political thing. So you had to fall. It's sort of like when pop music goes into uh, like new trends, like it's all boy bands when we were growing up. And like now it's sort of like, you know, chick groups and like power moves and like, you know, sexual sexual vibes and stuff like that. Like that's where pop music mm -hmm. is going now. So I guess it's sort of the same thing. Their flow just after 9-11 landed in politics and then just never really dug itself out until what I'd say recently. Who's the guy that's like all about smoking weed with Willie and you know who I'm uh, talking about? Ass in the sand. I don't know. Rex used to listen to him all the time. Oh, He's Zach Brown Band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always, I've always liked Zach Brown band. Actually. I found them to be more bluegrassy than country. Yeah. So maybe it's um, it. I don't know. I always feel like country always falls into one category. It's rather old country or new country. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Dolly Parton, since we were on her, we, I, I have to talk about, she's doing great things. Uh, she ends up, she has, or you don't have any kids. So, uh, but uh, our, our kid, they get a book. Like she has a program to where you get a free book every month, like all kinds of stuff. I don't know if you guys yep. have been to the Dolly Parton uh, log cabins, recommend it. They're great. We haven't been to stuff. the cabins, but we have been to um, the Dick, the the Stampede. Yeah. Um, What's the Stampede like? I need to know. It's like uh, it's like a, a you get dinner, and I mean the food was okay, yeah. um, but they put on a show and people on horseback and uh, <clears throat> come out and do a lot of tricks with the horses and they kind of put on a show. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of, it's sort of when you said it, it reminded me of you've been to pigeon forge. So uh, have you ever seen the uh, McCoy and um, yeah, we've been to that too. <laughs> like, I the McCoys. Yeah. I was yeah. really worried that that's what you're talking about. I was like, I couldn't imagine the Dolly Parton stampede. It's just a drag queen <laughs> with big boobs, like running around doing log rolls and stuff. Like, cause you know, I no. can't be there. <laughs> No, it's like a it's like a legit rodeo show almost. Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I have to I have to check that out next time. Is it is it down towards Pigeon Forge? Yeah, it's it's in Pigeon Forge. Oh well, there we go. I might have to check that out next time we're down there. Yeah. So, uh, when when did you like sort of uh, cue into when everything started switching? Was it was it after nine eleven? Uh, nine eleven seems to be the key point, but. Oh, I never yeah. really thought I never really thought about it until I read this. And mm -hmm. then I kind of started thinking more and more. And <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I was like, wow. Yeah, that I mean, that makes sense. Like, I never really thought how country music was used as. I mean, as a political side. Th as a political, yeah, yeah. As, as a political as political it, propaganda, essentially, you it's know, definitely it's definitely weird. Cause I've always like keyed into music being anti anything. Like it's just sort of an entity of its own. It's sort of like, you know, people use music to get away from things. It's weird that they would include it so heavily. Yeah. I mean, but you know, like we're talking about like country music, you know, as far as like the outlaw country, you know, the old country music artists, you know, like Willie Nelson and, and Haggard and, you know, they were like anti, establishment they were anti-cop you know they're like do what you want to do you know oh, and yeah. freedom freedoms and freedom <laughs> and now yeah. i mean if they were if they came out today and started singing songs like that they would they would i think they would probably get canceled you yeah, know I, I mean absolutely in this especially in this day and age i think i think we're sort of in the swing point i'd like to think so i don't know i like to think i'm more connected to recent events than I am, I'm sure. But like, it feels like there's an upswing of people sort of opening their eyes, but it definitely doesn't seem that way anymore with the, the, the Trump stuff going on. Of course, I feel I'm hoping we're in the back nine, but I think we're going to have to get 
post like to 2024 <laughs> before that stuff starts falling off and QAnon. I heard this was also uh, sort of ballparked in QAnon conspiracy. What this, this, yeah, the country music being, being involved with, with uh, 9 11 and boosting the, uh, the war games. Like, sort of, it's, it, it's like essentially they use this in like Bush sort of used country music to get the votes. You know, as, of course, you can cast war on anybody, but I mean, still, those votes need to be cast. And, you know, he was coming up on an election. You know, we could have voted him out and stopped the war, but it, it was like, you know, fuel on fire with all this country music talking about blowing up, you know, Afghanistan and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean it. I think, yeah, I mean, it's, I think that country music listeners back then, especially people that listen to that country music, you know, Bush knew he, that they were essentially going to vote for him. He knew oh. that. I mean, he, they knew. I mean, War knew. wartime presidents always get a second, uh, second run. Uh, yeah, and, it's just how it's always been. Yeah, and. I think, I think, you know, a lot of these, and I'm going to tread lightly here because there's a slip. I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, um, I mean, we're talking about a conspiracy theory. So, I mean, you, you do you, but I'll, I'll, I'll it, whisper it, whisper it, and I'll, I'll yell at it. <laughs> well, what I'm getting at is now these days, a lot of celebrities, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, working class people like us tell the celebrities stay out of politics, stuff like that, you know, and it's usually to these celebrities that don't agree with their political views. Yes. Absolutely. But, but like all these country artists using their music as war propaganda in the early two thousands, you know, I'm just like, shouldn't have they shouldn't have they stay out of politics too? Oh yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, but but then it was fueling okay. every, everybody. Sort of rallied in two thousand one, so it was it was everybody was like, "Fuck yeah, let's blow everything up!" You know, we it's like getting hit in a fight that you weren't involved in, but as soon as the other dude hit you, you're just hitting whoever hit you. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah, there were. I feel like when nine eleven happened, it. I think it definitely brought brought this country together. Yeah. Um, Everybody was pissed off when it happened, which is which and, is sad when when you think about it. it. It takes that many lives to bring America together. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it, it, now uh, everybody, it's uh, you know, it's now in present day, it's it's almost like America. You know, it's one side versus the other. You know, as it's far as the Civil War, but like you know, uh, no gunshots. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we're kind of in that era where we're, you know, it's Republicans versus Democrats, you know, left versus right. And you know, they, they say, you know, time is, or history is secular, right? So, you know, we just keep repeating ourselves. We don't learn our lessons. So maybe, maybe we've just restarted at the birth of America. We, we went through all these phases and now we've started right back in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, when 9 11 happened, People were pissed off and this whole country was pissed off about what happened. And, you know, it took that kind of tragedy to, 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 for people to forget about who, you know, who were they were going to vote for in the next election. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were just like, absolutely. He has, he's got a plan. Let's keep it going. And like, you know, yeah, all of us looking back now realize that I don't think Bush ever really had a plan. <laughs> he was just sort of, you know, let, let's see how much, much stuff we can do and you know keep, keep moving yeah. forward <laughs> i mean the man bankrupted a a oil rig i think we should have looked more into that when everybody voted for him the first time <laughs> not saying he was horrible yeah. we we've definitely seen where the 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 end goes now but hopefully we'll swing back towards the middle ground somewhere yeah but yeah so uh w with this like how, how did it resonate with you like when what particularly hit you that struck you and made you want to you know, dig more into this conspiracy theory? Uh, I thought when I, when you asked uh, for uh, conspiracy theories, I just thought, you know, I feel like as far as conspiracy theories go, everybody knows like, you know, the, your standard conspiracy theory, you know, Kennedy shot from the grassy knoll. Kennedy, or, yeah. There's the moon landing. 
you know the moon landing one i'm so excited for i'm getting somebody <laughs> soon for that one uh the moon landing one is interesting but i mean it's so so great and it's weird because like you know i I'm a man of science. I love science. A big thing I've, I've always held on to, but there's mm -hmm. always that like part of me that's sort of into conspiracies. And it's like, you know, it makes more sense. Like who is recording uh, the first steps? Like, you know what the flag, does it really move like that on, on uh, the moon? And it's like, you know, like it, there's so many little things like the, the way they moved, how they fell so quickly. Like it, it's full of holes, but anyway, back to, back to what we were getting on. But I thought this conspiracy, it, 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 it was just, it's like a wild card. It's, it's just like one of those conspiracy theories I feel like no one's really heard of. It, I, I mean, it was told by somebody. It was a theory somebody had wrote on Tumblr. So yeah, I don't so think. You have to give credit. It's a Mr. Y-A-R-R-A. -R you can take your best get at that, I guess at that one. <laughs> oh, God. Like a breasted drooler. There's a there's another name under it who actually has the whole conspiracy theory under it. I'm gonna post it. You guys can take your best shot at that. I'm not gonna murder it anymore. Yeah, it looks yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah. It definitely it definitely hits you out of nowhere. It takes a left turn, like you know, especially because I I'm not really into country music. Like I said in the beginning of the podcast, you know, I've always been like country music too sad. It just brings my vibe down. Like you know, I want more upbeat music, but this this like talking about how the whole switch, like when they talked about nine 11 hit, I went back and looked at songs before nine 11 songs after. And it definitely just like, it took a heavy twist towards propaganda. And it's so strange yeah. how they used it to fuel the fire for this, this war. Like it was, it was amazing. It was eye opening, honestly. And I feel like country music now, these days, it's just, <clears throat> it's just the same. I, I feel like country music today isn't even really country music. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, this is the perfect like moment. Yeah, this is the perfect moment to put in that quote. Let me give me a second. Uh, here, I'll go to my notes because this this hit me. Like as soon as they wrote it, I was like, "Oh man, the the mainstream country music for well over a decade now is glut of, or, or is is of trash perform uh, perform performing patriotic. I swear to God, I talk for a living. <clears throat> patriotic working class, but not really lab crafted, buzzwiser uh, sponsored nonsense." <laughs> that has managed to sound rebellious or has convinced its fans to sound rebellious whether uh, without ever actually questioning any power or structure whatsoever. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, that's, that's right on. That's all what I've always thought country music was, but the, you know, they got a point <laughs> like it's turned into, if you're not sponsored by a beer company or talking about getting drunk and fighting somebody or you're, you're not in the right area. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the 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 country music today is is interesting to say the least I, and I, not I, oh go ahead and I, I don't think it's it's interesting and it's 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 all repetitive it's it's all the same stuff just being sung in a different way oh you absolutely know? yeah uh, and i mean in all fairness you can throw that every direction but but it definitely does yeah. seem that they've stuck to for such a long time in the same ballpark. And I think I'm surprised, especially with in the past five years, how it hasn't really gotten too political. You know, you would have think that country music within like the past five years with, you know, Trump running and Trump becoming president, um, Country music would have definitely gotten more political, but I don't yeah. know. Well, you've definitely seen the swing. So, like, it, it it figures out that not everybody in country music was just some backwoods bumpkin racist. Apparently, there's a fine line that they sort of split in, and it seems like they're warring within themselves right now. It's sort of like the, I don't know if you were, you're pretty into rock. We used to listen to rock music and stuff back in the day. It's sort of like that, that post-punk era where everybody's like, punk really isn't music. And everybody was like, no, it is music, blah, blah, blah. And they sort of fought back and forth. I feel like that's the internal struggle that country music's going through right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like people, uh, I feel like people in the country music genre are probably too afraid to get political because they don't want to, Get Dixie chicked. <laughs> yeah, get, 
<laughs> get get blacklisted from the from the from that you know genre i guess yeah. you what, what is it they say about uh pop music you can't say a specific person because then you cut out half your audience uh what is it have you ever seen uh oh no he is a musician but also a comedian bo burnham there we go Bo Burnham. his song, song about like you can't mention somebody without arms because then you're cutting off you know what about that one girl who wants to buy your album that doesn't have any arms have so you like, have you heard Bo Burnham do the country song? No, I have not. I'm gonna have to look it up. Look that up because it definitely is. Uh, he definitely hits the nail on the head as far as what country music is like today. Um, yeah. And he he mentions himself. You know, I like country music, but I like the old country music. You know, that actually told a story and wasn't just about, you know, guy drinking beer a lot, you know, I, a girl. Even though that's always what I think of when I think of country music. <laughs> yeah. And I think, yeah, I think the newer country music has definitely planted the idea in a lot of people's heads that that's all country music. Um, but as far as like, country music changing after 9-11, I feel it got really bad for, for you know, probably five or six years. It, um, it was, well, I mean, it lasted pretty much the whole internal struggle of, of the war. So what we just got yeah. out. Yeah. What in, when was it? I want to say February, but that sounds wrong. Was it February? Uh think it was a i think it was a little later than february i feel like was it was it? maybe August. Maybe. i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway it was, yeah. it, was sometime. it was sometime recently yeah so i mean we just got out of it and so what the internal struggle started i'd say about two years ago so i mean from fucking 2001 till 2019 i mean that's pretty it's pretty long stretch of similar music being pumped out over and over and over again yeah yeah i think it i think it eased up after after a certain point but i think like the five or six years out of 9-11, I think it was definitely more in your face. You know, I think what, what perfectly puts like the nail on the head in this situation is, do you remember the South Park episode where they did the stairway to heaven? Yeah. <laughs> and it was the, it was like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So I think yeah. I, I, we might just have to use that as the main example for this, this conspiracy theory. Cause like that guy made Buku, uh, what was his name again? You know it better than I. That did the, the, uh, where were you? And it's like boot in the ass. Uh, put your, put your uh, name no, on top of Toby Keith. Toby Keith, yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Toby Keith made so much money off of 9 11. Like, it, it's almost to the point to where someone may have contacted him and be like, listen, we got this great opportunity. You want to make a bunch of money off of something really sad. <laughs> and for the, for the next, like what, 10 years, we'll keep pumping it and making money. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely took a tragedy and yeah, made some money off of it, which like in, in fairness, tragedy sort of countries go to, but yeah. Jesus, would uh, you let some give it some time to breathe? Like I feel like it happened. Like the the towers got hit, and he was sitting there. He's like, in the middle of it, if he was there, it was like raining particles on him. He's like, I got a fucking idea for a song. I got this, and he's like jotting shit down <laughs> while people are running. And it's like, no, wait, no, 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 get hit. It'll it'll make more money that way. <laughs> yeah, selling yeah, t-shirts I mean, at the feel, bottom of the tower. <laughs> I feel uh, <clears throat> I feel like that song. It was definitely, yeah, definitely about 9-11, but I think it was, it was also definitely about being the, being pro-war, you know, being, you know, him agreeing with Bush and then troops overseas. Yeah, in fact, like, I, I mean, this whole, this whole conspiracy theory contributes the fall of uh, country music to Toby Keith, which is really, I stumbled upon that as we were talking. So we really we ended up hanging on it. They were talking about yeah, how, I, you know, I, I, just when, I Googled, it, the, when yeah, I Googled it, when I Googled it earlier, I uh, I read I saw like an article because uh, I was looking for the link to send you and I saw an article essentially alluding to Toby Keith sort of ruining country music <laughs> like 
or country music being ruined and Toby Keith was like cited as one of the one of the one of the singers that kind of Oh yeah. Was, I mean he is the face like every time I see excuse me every time I see like one of those banners that's like, you know, a bald Eagle with like, you know, somebody standing on top of a tank shooting fucking M M 15 or 16. So, you know, I know guns uh, <laughs> and shooting them <laughs> off fucking, you know, America with the glittery bald Eagle flying through. Like I do think of that song. I'm like, Oh, I put his name at the top of the list. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's like, Oh God damn it. They're, they're right. Like, in fact, uh, speaking of those signs, me and my girlfriend were actually discussing this the other day about how it's sort of getting gross. Like we uh, like patriotism is getting more nationalist by the day. Like it, nowadays, like you see someone with an American flag and you can only assume they're out to say something disgusting to someone. Like they they yeah. have turned into the worst American possible. Yeah. I mean, um, that's definitely a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, so I do you ever listen to Bill Maher? Yes, yeah, I used to love him. Yeah, he he got sort of wishy washy lately, but so he made a he did an episode a couple months ago um, talking about um, you know us pulling out of the out of the out of the out of the war. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and he was talking about how uh, and you know Bill Maher is. Fairly, I mean, he's he's liberal and he's pretty yeah. left. Uh, but he also doesn't pull any punches though, so he just sort of yells out something, whatever's on his head. No, and he honestly, if you watch a lot of his episodes, he he shits on the left too. I mean, it's yeah. not just shit on the right. Uh, he, you know, he definitely cites the shortcomings that the left side has. Mm -hmm. uh, in this in this episode in particular, he talks about how you know the right has kind of like this this obsession with patriotism and, mm -hmm. and loving this country. And if you're a patriot and you love, you know, I love this country, you know, this, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Yeah. I think there are a lot of uh, issues in this country that need to be fixed. This country is far from perfect. Oh, it's yeah. never been perfect. Um, I'll say that, but you know, this is a nice country to live in, you know, and he, that's what he says in this episode. He says that, you know, I've often, essentially he was like, I've often picked on the right for, you know, being overly patriotic. Um, but there is a thing on the left of people saying how much they hate this country. And, and essentially he goes into, a monologue explaining like rights that other countries don't have that we have that we take for granted. Yeah. And, and that's kind of like the, that's kind of like the thing he goes into. And, um, but he also says, you know, I've never been overtly patriotic. Um, yeah. It's hard to be with all of our shortcomings. It's hard to be, but I, I've always, I mean, like you said, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Like, you know, this is a yeah. great country, but like, there's a line that I think you should draw. Like we were at a soccer game the other day and not our game, but a game across the way started playing the national anthem. Let me tell you how many people stopped and held up everything. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to stop. There's a national anthem playing in the area. And they had to turn towards a flag and, and put their arm on. I was like, it's getting culty. <laughs> like, yeah um yeah i get respecting yeah. the flag but holy shit <laughs> like, yeah i think there's a definitely a fine line between being patriotic and it kind of turned into like a cultish yeah, nationalist yeah it's it's getting yeah. really it, it's getting there like it like i said like it, it feels gross to see an american flag anymore not even for the fact that i don't love this country it's for the fact that i feel like whoever has that especially if you're flying off the back of your fucking car there's always, as soon as it waves, there's always a, a fuck Biden or something gross flying next to it. And it's like, can we, yeah. can we get the message away from the American flag, please? <laughs> like, well, Samantha and I, we were uh, up at the Dollar Tree up by our house. Uh, we live over in the, Hillview. So. The central of patriotism, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's and where they all was, go. I, I, my wife loves that story. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but we pull in and she ran in to get she had to get something from there i don't remember what it was but this dude in a truck old beat up pickup truck pulled in uh i mean he had an american flag and then he had a fuck biden flag it's always right next to it right next to it and i'm just like it, uh, that's his right i mean that's one of his rights in this country he can do you know he can say and fly whatever the hell he wants despite how you know annoying you might find it um but i you know like that's you know that's almost you know and he had a trump flag too and well, that's and i mean that's thing, fine yeah. you know but it's it, it gets to the point to where it's there it gets to the point to where there's a fine line between having your political views and it being you know too kind much. of yeah too much yeah like you know i'm not I'm not flying a Biden flag like shit. I, I always love the argument where people are like, you know, oh, well, you didn't like him. So obviously you like this guy. And it's like, no, I don't like either of them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't want to vote. I had to vote this year. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Like, uh, uh, and, you know, there's a guy in our neighborhood um, at the front of our neighborhood. Uh, he, I mean, he has a flagpole. Um, and he, I mean, he, he changes his flags out probably a couple times every month, a couple times a month. Is he like a military um, man? I, I'm, he's an older guy. I've only, yeah. he, he lives like you pull into our neighborhood and he lives off the first road to the left, which is like four houses because our neighborhood sits next to a farm. Mm -hmm. So like right next next to it is a farm like on that road it ends like our road our road ends we're at the very front of our road and it like the the very end of it is it leads to that farm but yeah. he anyways i'm i'm uh <laughs> it's okay. anyways i'm going off topic <laughs> anyways he he had he you know he always has an american flag out and it's fine and he had a uh, uh one of the don't tread on me flags mm -hmm. uh and then I've seen him hang. I've seen him flying a Confederate flag um, quite a few times. That's usually. Um, and I, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, that's his right. I mean, if he wants to fly, that's you know, that's his right. But we live in a pretty diverse neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I'm honestly shocked that he. I'm just like, he must not, he really must not give a fuck because. Well, you got to remember, there's always the argument. It wasn't about slavery. It was about taxes. Cause you know, you get taxed when you actually have to pay workers to do something. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you lose, when you lose your slaves, it, it, taxing comes more, more hardcore on you. So. Yeah. But I, I mean, like I said, that's his right, but I'm, I'm shocked just because. I mean, we live in a very diverse neighborhood. We live in a mm. very nice, quiet neighborhood. I mean, everybody looks out well, for I each don't other. Why don't you? <laughs> I mean, we all look out for each other. Everybody says hi. Everybody's friendly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it's a right. fairly small neighborhood. So, yeah. But. Our neighbors don't talk to us much anymore. We did. We didn't have the Trump flag out, so we're not we're not invited to any of the barbecues anymore. Oh, God. Yeah. We, I, and I've had a black man in my home, so that really threw them. Uh, Will, oh. Will uh, my, my buddy that podcast with me from uh, Why So Nerdy, he came over and I was like, uh, we were staying outside talking and I could feel the eyes on me from my uh, my neighbors. And I'm like, you're just going to have to fucking deal with it, guys. New world. Who's this? <laughs> like, oh, I would have looked over and I said, I would have said, you have a fucking problem? Oh, like, yeah, we, I would have said started, something. Yeah, we've started <laughs> some stupid stuff in this neighborhood. Uh, we have a, a, a Hispanic boy that comes over and hangs out with our kids and he comes over specifically here because everybody else is a little fucking sketchy around the neighborhood so <laughs> he's like i feel safe over here <laughs> i was like i'm so sorry you have to deal with that but anyway we'll steer away from race but uh but yeah that, that's usually where it lands with the confederate flag like i i hate that they have to be synonymous with the american flag because weirdly enough it's two opposite i mean it's two opposite ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. like they were they were literally fighting but yet you fly them right next to each other and and consider yourself patriotic it's weird it's just it's strange to me yeah, yeah, no. but but back to uh, country music. Well, we'll land back there. Uh, so it it being destroyed on nine eleven. So when uh, what would be a better way to state this? Like when not when did you notice, but when did it become more more dire uh, 
in in your life like where you're just like everything's politics now like what can we can we stop like when it, when did it really hit you because you said you didn't really listen too much but your family did did they start saying something when you sort of stumbled upon this or no um no nothing like that um i feel i feel like it didn't get I, as far as like everything being political and pl- politics like everything being about politics I, I honestly think it wasn't bad until you know the 2016 election mm-hmm. um, and i mean even when even when obama ran you know in 2008 you know people were people were pissed you know oh yeah it was really weird like not even pissed. not even the look of like you know oh hey this is this is a world changing event you know and i'm not saying he was a great president or anything he did a good job he did an alright job but i you know it's I mean, he, got, like, he got my vote both elections so yeah yeah but like you know it's not like you know somebody says like oh well, you just loved him i was like well he did an alright job but i didn't love him you know i've never idolized anybody like this it's it's become whoever is running president is now your Messiah. It reminds me a lot of when Kennedy was president. A lot of people have his picture up. A lot of people, you know, were praising him as doing such a good job and stuff. And it's like, if you were anti Kennedy at the time, it was a real bad fucking thing. Like you wouldn't get into bars, like, you know, stuff like that. So, so it sort of follows in history. I don't know if we've just hit like a secular point in time to where it's just like, Oh, let's relap this into the mix. Try to see what this does. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it got I don't think it got bad until the 2016 election. You know, yeah. I think I think I think in 2008 some people were pissed, but you know, that that was essentially how an election went. There was one side that didn't want somebody to win and then the other side that didn't want the other person to win. But when but, somebody won, the fight was over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, exactly. And once 2016 hit, I mean, it, it, it everything became politics, mm-hmm. um, music, movies, television. I mean, it I became mean, a lifestyle. There's it, even like movies and TV shows now. I mean, there's some kind of political undertone to it. Yeah, um, and you know what? I think that's always been a thing with a lot of stories. I mean, you look at you know you look at story like I've been watching Harry Potter. Uh, yeah. I've been watching the movies on HBO. Uh, and I mean, you look at the political and social undertones and uh, I'm not relating it to this, but there's a lot of it's almost like it was she, when she wrote that those stories, um, she was kind of using the Holocaust as a reference. Uh, you know, you know, it's it's almost like she kind of used, you know, World War Two as sort of, you know, a reference point for how the story played out. Uh, obviously I'm not comparing it to the Holocaust, but um, <laughs> are you, you know, saying well, wizards should be wearing a star, Nick? We're putting you on the spot right now on Facebook. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, everything, everything, you know, stories, movies, all that from the past, everything has had some kind of political or social undertone to it. Um, I think after um, 2016, I think some of it, probably got a little worse, you know, oh, but I had to bring but up everything Alan Jackson was the one who did Where Were You. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just, no, I stumbled good. upon yeah. the name and I was like, oh, I need to get that out before it gets too far. Yeah. Alan Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. That guy, classy right. guy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's kind of 2016. I feel like is probably the turning point and I'm not blaming it on one presidential candidate or the other, but it, it was just a shit show. <laughs> it's it's become a culty thing. I, yeah, I, I think yeah. we can we can tread on them a little bit, not too much. Yeah, I, in fact, I'm going to get into. Uh, I'm going to have a Q and on person on shortly. Uh, not this week, but I'm hoping I'm hoping in a few weeks. You're uh, interviewing. You're interviewing. Oh someone? yeah, I'm interviewing, and it's going to be it's going to be. Oh, a blast. that's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Hey, I I'm going to watch that. They are they are real deep in it too. Like I, I and I'm gonna I'm gonna be respectful. I swear to God, I'm gonna be respectful because I I am totally fine with someone having an opposite view. I've always wanted to interview a real deep Trumper, 
So this is going to be real interesting to interview somebody so deep that they've they've evolved into thinking. Uh, what was it? Uh, they now think that Kennedy is going to come Kennedy back. back. Uh huh. But he's actually in the form of Keith Richards. So Keith Richards is actually JFK Senior. He never died, and he's going to come back. <laughs> and be I thought they. I thought JFK Jun. They thought JFK Junior was coming back. That was for the rally. That was for the rally. He was coming oh, back was for the, the rally, rally to okay. announce Trump's new uh, to to indict him or not to indict him to bring him into presidency. No, no, no. This is oh, all new. This is this is Keith Richards is actually JFK, and he is going to come back and run with Trump next. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. I'm trying. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better when I have them on, I swear to God. But I'm, I'm going to try yeah, not to laugh too hard. The whole JFK Jr. thing, I read that, and I was like, are these people fucking nuts? Yes. And, and I mean, as part of the, the, yeah, as part of mean, the nuts the main, community, we do not let we do not allow them at the parties. They, we took their badges away. <laughs> no, like, no longer. That man like died in a plane crash like twenty plus years ago. It's yeah. been at least yeah, it's been like twenty plus years. But I mean, oh, <laughs> since since we're sort of, I feel like we've sort of ended on the the country music side of this. I do have to add something on to the end of our episode. We we got about twenty minutes left, so I feel like this has to be discussed. Have you been involved at all on any aspect with this uh, concert that went on the other day? Uh, what is his name? Troy Scott the Astro. Or, yeah, the Astro World. Have uh, you I seen just, anything involving uh, that? Yeah, I mean, I saw where eight people died. Yeah. Uh, I saw where uh, a bunch of people were injured. Um, I saw, uh, I've seen a lot of backlash um, from a lot of people on social media. Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, Travis Scott, uh, yeah, Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Travis Scott, yeah. Uh, kept on playing and and stuff like that. And um, honestly, I, I've 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 read a little bit about it, but I haven't really read too oh. too much. I, I've seen videos posted, but I haven't watched them. I feel like my TikTok has turned into a Travis Scott TikTok. So like, I can't get away from this man right now, and so I've sort of like third party been brainwashed by what everything has been happening because like yeah. the conspiracy theory behind the uh the oh my god we just said his name and i already forgot it what what was it travis scott travis scott so the the, the conspiracy theory behind the travis scott thing is that apparently they think it's it a worked. satanic ritual because yeah, the, the stage was an upside down cross and he had a yeah. portal to hell oh my god dude this thing got so deep like they had uh, the the weird picture up top had like sad people walking towards a portal, and like they're like those are the souls of the people that died at this concert. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like I, this is I getting think, so deep. I, I think uh, I think those out there saying it was a satanic, you know sacrifice i feel like they don't really know enough about satanism to really understand why that's know. such bullshit have you have you seen some of it though like i, I know yeah, i know everything I makes sense when you're watching a youtube video but <laughs> but like they were pointing out the symbols like all the eyes that were on the post like you know they were saying that it had the exact number of people that died which has now changed i think but i think it's i think we're up to 11 people that died in the the whole concert it, it blows terrible. my mind. People have been talking about how it's a uh, it would uh, it would happen at a rock concert too, and I was like, you know, I remember in mosh pits, the rule was if you knock somebody over, you had to stand with your arms wide so they could get up. Yeah, we yeah we uh, we went to a show about five years ago. We went to see uh, Shine Down was one of the opening was the opening band, and that's really the only reason we went. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like Shine Down six a.m., which is Nikki Six's band, and then I think it was Five Finger Death Punch, which we don't really know a whole lot. You know, we don't really listen to them, but yeah, that's the uh, thing that killed uh, uh, Bill at the end of Kill Bill. <laughs> that's all I know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but when they were playing, there was a big ass mosh pit down there. I mean, we weren't down there; we were in the 
we weren't too high up, but we were on the second level. Yeah. Um, and somebody, one of the dudes like lost his, uh, one of his contacts fell out. <laughs> oh, wow. And the dude, the lead singer stopped like the entire show and was like, let him look for his fucking contact. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you know? and that, that level of dedication to your fans is rough. Like that, that's what yeah. we need. Oh, there's grumpiness going on out in the living room. Well, I'll, I'll try to cut that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yeah, like the whole, the whole satanic sac that, that what he was doing was a satanic sacrifice. It just, that's a load of shit to oh, be honest. But it's, but it's so fun to like, uh, go yeah. look at that shit and be like, Oh, that's sort of interesting. Like, Have you ever watched the documentary Hail Satan? Uh, I think I've stumbled upon it, but I don't want, I didn't think I watched the whole thing. It's a pretty interesting documentary. I think, uh, I think is a interesting documentary to watch, especially like people that don't really understand what that, which I'm not a Satanist. I'm, I'm not anything, but yeah. you know, it's, it, you know, people think of Satanism and they think devil worship and that's really not the case. No, but. weirdly enough, they're very kind, gentle people. Uh, I know a few people who are card wielding members of the satanic church and they're very nice. Yeah, I brought up I to mean, the Mormons. I talked to the other day. They weren't very happy, <laughs> <laughs> but like, oh, I mean, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody said, uh, somebody made a tweet saying, that uh, atheists created the Church of Satan to avoid paying taxes, <laughs> and they're like, "We pay our taxes. Every other church should too." I mean, let's be <laughs> honest. Rich people thought of Christianity to bring up uh, to dodge taxes too. Let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah, and and that's that's another thing with like the new age country music. Mm -hmm. It's gotten very political, and it's and, and I mean, country music has always been somewhat religious. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very, uh, it's very old, Christian. Old country, the old, old country. I mean, that had a lot to do with with church and Christianity, and mm -hmm. you know. But was it Jesus, yeah. beer, and and girls? Was like the the trinity of old time <laughs> country music. Yeah, but um, I think it still retains some of those themes. But I think like new age country music, it's all about drinking and partying and it, it says that in the the link i sent you about the you know the the conspiracy yes. theory yeah about how you know country music you can't be sad anymore you have to talk about partying yeah. all the time and mm -hmm. <laughs> you, like, have, you have to mention yeah. what beer you're drinking where you're drinking at because it's got to be at the river bottom or something like that and yeah then, yeah and then you got to be floating in a tube down some dirty river like, yeah, uh, yeah, and I don't know. I just think it's. I think that theory in particular is very interesting. Just because I felt and and like I said, I'm going to make sure to put it on the link for the listeners to look up because it's uh, honestly there. It, it it definitely hooked me, especially not being someone involved whatsoever in the country music line. Like I barely listen to it. My girlfriend forces me most of the time, but uh it's been amazing to like sort of look back and realize that I don't like new post nine 11 music because strictly of what they were talking about, all the, all the, the politically charged statements. And like, it, it had to fall in line with like almost a fascist statement of like, you had to have beer, have a party and you had to praise Jesus and you had to love your president. Like mm -hmm. it had to fall under all those categories that you couldn't talk about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, as opposed to outlaw, you know, you have all that outlaw country that. I think Willie Nelson was a good, good one you threw out. Like he's very fuck the industry, fuck police type of deal. Like where he's just yeah. like do do what you feel is freedom. Yeah, yeah. He's not he, hurting nobody. I mean him and him and uh, <clears throat> Hank Junior. They uh, they didn't give a fuck. They did whatever yeah. fuck they wanted. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, you got you got artists like uh, like Dolly. You know, she is a very progressive. Oh my God, she is the best woman, woman ever. Yeah, she's you know. amazing. I don't know if you follow her much, but she does so much good for the world. She really she does. does. Yeah. She really does. We, we yeah. need more Dolly Partons in this world. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. I think we've pretty much got it. I think we hit it pretty much on the head. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up? 
No, sir. I think we're yeah, all good. You got anything coming up? Anything special you want to promote? Any shout no, outs sir. you want to yell for? Nah. No. No. Nope. I'm just asking. Nope. I figure I don't want to ditch anybody out. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. It's been great. I, I Thanks really, for having I, me. I, I, we definitely need to get into this more. And if you have any more, we'll definitely have you back on. Be be thinking we'll of do. a good conspiracy theory, and we'll get you back on here. I got a good one. I need to do some more research on it, though. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Just yeah. let me know so I can I can research with you. I do like to come in a little bit blind, but but I definitely yeah. I, I, I'll definitely research a little bit with you. All right. Sounds good. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us for the the first live but second episode of Tinfoil Bunker. I appreciate you guys for watching and listening. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye.